Hello, future viewers. Succeeding all the time is boring. Let's go down another failure path today. Well, relatively speaking. Still less failure than, for example, the losing in Diomedes path. A fair bit less than that, yeah. But it could be interesting, what we're doing here. The Sol system suddenly seemed a vast and lonely place. After the exhilaration of the flight from Draco, we began to realize that we weren't wanted there. That far from being an all-conquering liberation force, we were regarded as criminals breaking into the enemy's home, and they were ready for us. The Navy's forces had left us seriously depleted. We were in danger of imminent extinction. After we'd come so far, surely we couldn't allow that. Now, your reaction to that might be along the lines of, All how do they expect to be viewed, exactly? Now committed to ensuring the consolidation but of the current bear in mind base. that the League has had uh, allies pretty much minimal. any system that it's gone to. Military losses in fact, even occurred. Saul, if you look closely enough, has some sympathizers. captured within the outer zones of the system are being installed with full intelligence gathering networks on board. As these are brought online, we will be able to improve the accuracy of our information. Station 4 in the Neptune Zone is also carrying internment facilities. League escort ships are confirming the capture of a Navy communications craft, which is being transferred to this station. Ensure that this escort is allowed to reach the space station without enemy harassment. Should the space station be targeted, assist in its defense. All right, so we've got a defense mission using a vampire. That's not a great combination. Vampires are used for fast striking missions, but once again, it's just whatever they have available when the situation shows up, so we gotta deal with it. This is Wing Leader. Welcome, pilot. We have no enemy interference detected. We are approaching destination. So we got the captured ship escorted by a couple of Dark Angels. I'm just gonna follow them. Just... just because. And yep, the ship is not actually captured. Those are not actually Dark Angels. And what they said has that just that right amount of sinister. Anyway, these are a new kind of enemy fighters. They like their missiles. Fortunately, they don't actually fight quite as hard as Faction Dark Angels do. And that's very important because we are under-equipped for this sort of fighting. And there's no avoiding uh, killing these fighters here. Furthermore, the Comscraft is going to be shooting at us the entire time, which is going to be a problem because we don't have the gear to kill a capital ship. I think the Vampire is the one League craft that can't really do it. You need at least double lasers. Or at least, it's technically possible with single lasers, but I don't recommend it. Unfortunately, while I tried to use flares, all of the missiles came from the front, which, well, a little bit of a problem. All external communications are blocked. Fighters of unknown configuration detected. Uh -oh, there's yeah, it is tough. Or at least most of the missiles came to the front. Whichever. Um, this is why I'm saving. I saved my stun missiles because uh, specters are dif difficult to peel off with just one laser. And when they're flying around in that erratic way that they do when they're attacking a uh, capital something or large target, let's say, yeah, I would I wouldn't be able to uh, get get their attention fast enough without the stun missiles. 
Also, this means that the two craft I am able to stun don't get a chance to fight back, which is very nice considering how much the first two were able to hurt me. Also, yeah, that, that comms craft is closing in and is going to provide um, <laughs> point defense support for the, um, for the specters as well. And this is the tough one. Because, as you've probably observed, those things are fairly durable, especially given what I'm armed with. So, just doing this to one of them before they have the chance to destroy the station is a little tricky. I, don't, I won't say that I know their movement perfectly, as demonstrated right there, but I, I can do it well enough to peel one of them off. Nope. Oh. Yeah, that that's a that's pretty ugly right there. Yeah, this is another one of those really tough missions. Of the ones we've played, this is probably the second hardest, but not by a very large margin. This is command. Nice work, pilot. You may dock with the station for repairs and further instructions. Commencing it's worth noting that sequence. this mission does not end your campaign if you fail it either. This is another one of those things that they kind of expect you to fail and branches off further. And the overall plotline is recoverable. But I like to sh just show that the mission is still possible if you approach it the right way. League forces throughout Seoul are advised that the Navy are using a previously unencountered military technology. Current statistics indicate that we are unlikely to advance in this system unless we can ascertain specific details regarding the nature of this technology. It appears that holographic systems allow enemy craft to mimic League ships. It is known as cloning. League Command are endeavoring to secure a clone craft for research purposes. To this end, decoy distress signals will be transmitted within the Uranus zone to attract Navy attention. As Navy craft enter the vicinity, you are required to engage them in combat. Attempt to stun them. At least one stunned clone craft must be tractored in by your support frigate. Well, that is the next logical step. We're gonna XCOM it up. Although, I don't think we're actually going to field our own clone craft. Probably more like research ways to detect them more easily. Well, this, this mission is less tricky than the previous one. However, you do have to know the right approach for it. Other Navy ships may well try to prevent lead capture of this new technology. How do you figure that, huh? Well, as tempting as it is to dive forward really far and engage the enemy craft, they're heading for our ship and we have to defend it. The Thunderchild will head for you, so you don't really have to worry about it, but the avalanches are another story. So, th those things get relaunched if destroyed, but we can use my technique of lowering lowering their shields and then their health a little bit and they'll just keep following you forever. That part, once done, makes the mission a fair bit easier, but there's a second trick to pull off as well. I probably should have just used an anti-shield miss missile here to speed things up. Oh well. It worked out okay. The second part. There's three specters near the Navy uh, frigate, I think, and none of them will go out towards your your own frigate that wants to capture them. I believe the way the mission was intended to be accomplished was that you disable one of them with your EMP guns and then tow it with a grapple gun, but you don't actually have to do that. 
You can use the same trick that I did with the other ships and just damage one enough that it decides to follow you around. And this is much easier with a scatter gun than with a single laser. I just hope that uh, all I did was scratch the hull a little bit and not damage any important internals that they wanted to research, because that would be embarrassing. Well, now that it's following me, I can just jet on over to the League Frigate. The Spectre and other ships will follow me. And well, as you will see, things work out pretty nicely. Just making sure the Spectre is following me, and there it is. It does not actually have to be disabled for the League Frigate to get a grapple on it. Although I'll be nice and stun the ship anyway so it doesn't shoot too much while being pulled in. That seems like the courteous thing to do. I imagine it will also Pilot, save the hangar crew a fair bit of trouble. Please provide cover until we can clear the vicinity. The good news is you don't actually have to do much here. The League Frigate immediately warps away like it should. I, I like it when allies do things that make sense. It has a really nice feel to it. This is Command. Frigate has cleared the area. Mission complete. Well done. Hooray. Jump sequence initiated. Now I'd like to note something about the post-battle analysis. Once it shows up, that is. So, no kills whatsoever. But I think that the Navy would prefer that we shot down all of the Navy craft on that battlefield than ca to capture what we did right there. Kind of goes to show that objectives matter more than personal Command kill count. Objectives are currently being prepared regarding the League's future within this system. Be aware that should further military losses be incurred, an order to leave Seoul may be transmitted. However, disruptive measures are being maintained where possible. Civil disorder is being instigated on the vulnerable planet of Saturn, where unrest appears to be endemic. Intercepted Navy intelligence indicates the existence of a powerful beam weapon being assembled at a moon base on Titan. A strike cannon attack is proposed on this region. The cannons are to be moved into position. They will be trained on a surface moon base. Supply armed support to all craft managing this operation. The cannons must be positioned and the moon base destroyed. So it looks like because we weren't able to set up and defend a supply chain like we wanted to, and possibly communications, our position in Sol is really tenuous right now. But not so tenuous that we can't pull off an assault like this, which is a pretty big deal. That, that moon base, it, it'll be pretty clear to see why that thing is so important. Also, I mentioned that we don't really see any missions where we guard bomber craft, but this is close enough for me. In this one, we have to defend strike cannons uh, while they, well, at least according to the plan, they will do the heavy lifting damage-wise. And, yeah, that I consider that uh, pretty good. I don't mind that sort of mission. Yeah, these tornadoes, they don't go after any of your fleet craft, which is... Well, that is a thing that makes sense. As I mentioned before, single laser equipped fighters are probably not going to do a great job at that.
after we mess with the uh, Thunder Child fighters, eventually they're gonna start going after our um, larger ships, and we want to prevent that. We'll use the same trick that we normally do for that sort of situation. And we don't have any allied fighters here to mess with it. So it should be pretty effective. That's one. I believe there's only two respawning fighters here, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Oh, moon base weapon grid powering up. That, that sounds ominous. Our strike cannon is setting itself up, and wow, okay, they weren't kidding. That looked like a big something. It was definitely an energy weapon, but I hesitate to describe exactly what it is. It looks pretty powerful, though. Well, it looks like the strike cannon is powering up or aiming or something important. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's charging up there. Ooh. Yep, it looks like that moon base cannon has managed to land a direct hit or two. Nice work. Moon base destroyed. Mission complete. The good news is we've landed a direct hit on our own and Wait, did we just destroy the whole moon there? Um, okay. No wonder the strike cannon needed so long to set up. Also, didn't know they were quite that powerful. Dang. Technology is pretty wild in this game. Well, uh, we're not quite done though. Even though we've reached a point where we can save, this is one of those times where there's just one mission ahead before we decide which route we're going on. Now, losing here prompts, I believe, the main losing cutscene in Saul, which I don't want to show off just yet. I want to leave that for the final leg of the journey beginning to feel like a descent into hell. They were dark times, and the fleet was taking serious damage. But the nearer we got, the harder it became to turn back. The Navy was on full alert now, poised to decimate our incursion into its territory. They had awesome reserves of firepower. We hadn't expected it to be any other way, but facing them in battle was truly terrifying. Their hardware was ranged against us, and there was almost nowhere left to run. To reach our target now, we had to do more than damage the Navy. We had to destroy their will to fight. Concentrated enemy forces are now targeting League vessels throughout the Sol system. Intelligence units are unable to supply full projections regarding the possibility of seizing this system. A League Dreadnought in the Mars Zone is reporting a possible serious engagement with a Navy Titan. The Dreadnought has been cleared to take aggressive action should this be necessary. However, it is unclear whether it is sufficiently equipped to complete such an action. Provide armed support to this Dreadnought and ensure that the Navy ship is destroyed. The prevailing power balance within this system makes all such missions critical. Well, we knew it was going to happen eventually. We got out of that previous Navy Titan encounter pretty easily due to circumstances. It was it was pretty cool circumstances, but this time we got to face it head on. Well, I prefer a demon to a Hydra for this sort of thing, but the Hydra will do just fine. Triple lasers work well enough. On the enemy's side, well, they have a tor uh, tornado shooting at us, which is no big deal, but they also have a couple of bomber craft going after our dreadnought. We can 
tilt the damage race in our favor by distracting the Sor Storm Lord and making it chase us instead. And that takes care of that. And now we got to get to shooting the Titan. Well, I'm sure you've observed by now that attacks ag against capital ships generally g are done the same way regardless of what that ship is. Just keep flying, strafe it a whole bunch, and uh, try not to engage from medium range because that makes it easier for their capital uh, beam attacks to hit us. Unfortunately, um, I was a little unused to cycling the weapons for optimal firing time. But that's, I wouldn't say that's the most important thing. Just keep moving, keep changing directions a lot. You'll still get hit because some of the guns are too close to avoid, but you can avoid most of the damage this way. I see that for its final attack, it um, propelled its broken saucer section at me. This has been a good day for the league. Be proud of yourselves, pilots. Your mission is complete. Commencing jump sequence. And that is that for now. But since we've been dealing with capital ships a fair bit, especially um, Dreadnoughts and uh, that Titan, I think it's a pretty good idea to take a look at what the database has to say about them. I would have liked to look at the Dreadnoughts earlier, since there was that Dreadnought versus Dreadnought battle. But that mission, for whatever reason, did not unlock the entry, so we'll take a look Dreadnought. now. Dreadnought. Following the success of their highly effective destroyer, the GDX group, based on an artificial moon in the Sol system, were allowed to submit proposals for a heavily defended, offensive vessel capable of engaging several smaller battleships. Early efforts included the doomed Panic Day automated attack craft, which was found to suffer from defective circuitry. During the second phase, however, GDX drew up plans for what they referred to as the Fearless Friend, a devastating and strong war craft. Following refinement, the craft was renamed the Dreadnought, and was to become one of the most powerful weapons in space warfare. The League would like to be able to manufacture more dreadnoughts than current capabilities allow. However, resource rationing remains strict, and thus the Force feels itself to be lacking in such heavy offensive weaponry. Titan. The origins of the Titan are unknown. It is a recent addition to the Navy's fleet, and is regarded by Empire commanders as the weapon which will ultimately smash the League of Free Worlds uprising. Analysis of the Titan's alleged capabilities suggests that it may be capable of destroying entire worlds although such speculation is yet to be confirmed. What has been pointed out to me about the Titan, which I uh, kind of like, is that it's not that much bigger than the next smaller class of ship. It just has the most up-to-date equipment and a kind of a new design. And that is enough to make the difference, I guess. Well... Um, thanks, as always, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. We are getting cl very close to the end, and I will see you next time.